Wonder Boy, congratulations on the victory. The the word I keep seeing the most, I think, is vintage to describe you know this performance tonight. Um, is that is that a word you would use? And and what did you think about this evening? Um, I thought it was awesome, man. I mean, I I. I trained as hard as I could for Vicente Luque. I know he's ranked number 14, but I think he's one of the, he's the toughest guy I face in the octagon. Definitely the hardest head as well. <laughs> um, ended up doing a number on my hand, um, but uh, you know, he was tough. So I knew I knew it was, wasn't going to be easy. I knew it was going to be easy taking him out and I was ready for a three, five minute round war for sure. When did the hand, did, when did it happen, do you know? <sighs> um, second round, I ended up smoking him clean in the forehead. Uh, I didn't feel it till I walked back to the second or after the second round. Um, third round, uh, I knew it was hurt, but I threw it anyway. <laughs> uh, at the end of it, I decided to start moving a little bit, just kind of pick my shots because I knew it was, it was it was pretty bad out there in the octagon. And you know it's bad when you feel it in the octagon because you know when you got the adrenaline going. So um, yeah, so I just decided to kind of back off a little bit and pick my shots in the third round. I did want to ask you about your mentality because you said it was the hardest fight you ever had. It looked like at some point, you know, your style is all about, you know, finesse and flair and that sort of thing. At some point, it looked like you were just like, this is going to be a street fight. I mean, was, did this feel like, I mean, did you feel like this is just a really, really tough fight and I've got to make a, an adjustment to the style? Oh, uh, you know? 100%. I knew he, he's the type of guy who doesn't aggressively move forward, so he's done his studying. I like those guys who kind of come forward and I use the angles to counter their attack. He wasn't aggressive, so I knew he was thinking. He was trying to get me to come in, so I had to kind of stop back and, and, uh, you know, like I said before, I picked my shots, but I had to kind of stand there in front of them. You know what I'm saying? So I took some shots in the process. But, um, you know, I can fight inside. I can fight standing in front of you. I can fight moving. So I can fight everywhere. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, I know you had something to prove tonight, and you feel you still have a title run left in you. But what, what do you see as next other than taking a little time off for that hand? I mean, do you see a path for you or what makes sense for you most next? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, of course, the, the fight didn't go spectacularly, you know, have a crazy knockout like I, like you know everybody wanted and uh, I knew it wasn't going to be that I knew it was gonna be very difficult so I see myself working up the rankings and I, I figured I, I was kind of disappointed the fight uh, the main event into the way it did because I really wanted to fight one of those guys would be awesome nicest guy versus the baddest guy <laughs> uh, would be really cool but we'll see uh, beforehand before the fight you said your loss to Pessis kind of lit a fire within you can you talk a little bit about your mindset going into this one well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I've never been knocked out before. My last fight is one of the, that and my second fight with Matt Brown is the only fight I felt like I've actually ever lost. The ones against Woodley and, and, and Till, I felt like I won those fights. So it did lit a fire in me. I mean, you know, when you get knocked out, you wonder, you, you go back home wondering, well, why didn't I see this? What's going on? Am I slowing down? You know, am I getting too over this game? So all this stuff's kind of going through your head. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to tell yourself no. I'll be 37 in February, but I consider myself, you know, a young 37-year-old. And um, going into this fight like I did every, every, every other fight. You know, I was focused. I worked hard. I trained hard. I felt great going into the gym and uh, just pushing myself. And I got good coaches and good teammates to help me get me there. So I was definitely ready for this fight mentally and emotionally and, and physically for sure. Do you feel like uh, you're turning a new chapter now? Uh, do you feel like you've left that all behind you now and you're looking forward? Oh, 100%. I'm not giving up on that title. I know I'm ranked number nine, like I said, or eight. I don't know what I am right now, but I'm not giving up on it. I know I'm, I'm the best in this division. I fought the best in this division. The only guys I haven't faced are the top two right now. You know, I, I've faced Tyron twice, you know, Till, Johnny Hendricks, Ellenberger, Whitaker. Um, I'm not giving up on it. Is there anyone that makes sense for you next? I don't know. That's a good, I don't know. Um, like I said, I, w I would love to have fought the guys that whoever won it tonight. I mean, I, I know, I know Masvidal did. And I know it, it didn't happen the way he wanted it to, and they're, so they're probably going to run it back. But give my give my time, uh, my body time to heal up when I get back home, and we'll go from there. Wonder Boy, um, over here, front left. What's up? Um, you've obviously always been so open about the Pettis fight. I'm just wondering in that first round today. Um, was there any, what was going through your mind? You know, Vicente hit you with some good shots. What were you thinking there? Well, you normally, if you go, uh, normally I, I kind of take it fairly slow in the first to kind of figure my partner out to see how the feel goes. You know, a lot of times you can kind of figure them out just by feeling, moving around and, you know, throw some feints and however they react to their feints can really set up some strikes afterwards. But he did land some good shots. I didn't expect him to actually come forward as, as fast as he did. But it was kind of like, um, 
it was really cool to be able to take those shots and keep going, you know, especially after getting knocked out during the Pettis fight. A lot of guys are worried about that, and that was something mentally that I was prepared for going into this fight. Um, I didn't hesitate one bit, and didn't, I didn't think I couldn't take his shots at all. So I think that helped me a lot. A lot of guys that get knocked out, they rush in there too soon and barely get clipped, and out they go. So I made sure we took the time off to really, to really heal up, and I think that did the job for sure. You mentioned fighting through with the with the bad hand and everything and everything you want went into going into this fight. What do you think you learned about yourself after tonight? Uh, I learned that, you know, even in the toughest times, I'm able to adapt to my opponent. I remember, you know, in the first round, he hit me with a good shot. I couldn't really see. I was seeing two people out there in the first. Hit me in the right eye. Couldn't see. Bro. I don't know if you saw me rubbing my eye in the first round, but I couldn't see him. And where most people would find a way out at that point, um, you know, I kept going. So I learned a lot out of my losses and in those tough situations more than anything. Steven right here. You had told me, you know, about a year ago that you felt you needed to make some changes to your game to kind of open up a little more, maybe be more aggressive and just kind of fill in some of the holes that you thought you saw in yourself. Do you think tonight you win fight of the night in a winning effort, you landed the most strikes of any fight in your UFC career, are you trending in the right direction in that regard? A hundred percent. You know, I, I go out there in the mindset that I, like I do every other fight, to be honest with you. Um, he was just an opponent that I felt like I had to stand there a little bit, kind of set up my strikes, throw a little bit of feints, so I didn't really go anywhere. I didn't work my ankles like I normally do because it just didn't feel right. And like I said before, a lot of times you step out in the octagon, if something doesn't feel right, <clears throat> you know, you kind of you change it up. You have to adapt. So my angle changing and stuff like that, um, it didn't feel right. Like I, like I said, you know, going into the second round, it ended up breaking my hand, so that kind of slowed me down a little bit too. But I didn't realize I threw over 200-something strikes. That's crazy. Um, you know, it's nowhere near as Colby Covington, but <laughs> I think it was like 600, right, or something like that? Yeah, something ridiculous. Rounds, oh, that's right. He did. That was a 5-5 five, five in a round fight. But, yeah, man, I mean, um, I'm just happy to get back in that win column for sure. Any idea, like, how bad the hand is? Like, is it something you think might have to get surgery? It's is definitely it something... broken. I mean, the knuckle is kind of back here. Oh, man. So I don't know if you can see it, but uh, it's kind of soft and gooey right here. But back here, it's fairly hard. I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure it's broken. But, it's not uh, hurt you know, to touch I, it? It's not the first time I've had to do I mean, when I fought Mazudal back here in, two, in 217, I ended up breaking both my thumbs in the first round. And... You know, have to keep finding the, the other two rounds is pretty rough, but I've done it once, I can do it again. So uh, that was kind of uh, what I was, I wasn't really thinking, I was just doing. I mean, if you're thinking out there, it's too slow. So if it hurt, oh well. But it did kind of slow me down in that third round, because every time I threw as hard as I, I threw, as, uh, I swear I hit this guy as hard as I could. He just kept coming forward. I, I, don't, I don't know how many times I've knocked him down, but tough, golly. I don't, he's definitely the toughest dude I've faced in the octagon so far. Uh, you know, speaking of tough dudes you faced in the octagon, what did you think of Masvidal's performance? Oh, he looked better than ever, man, for sure. Definitely a different fighter from when I fought him last. Uh, his striking looked good, very unpredictable. Um, that head kick in the first round was sick. I got to give him props for that because I love to kick people in the head as well. Uh, but um, I thought it was great. I mean, Nate Diaz, I don't, he had, didn't have an answer. Um, he, tried to, he tried to come back with some stuff, but... I can just tell, Masvidal crushed him in the first, you know, at, at that first round. He didn't want it anymore. I'm pretty sure he wanted out of there. But uh, hats off to Masvidal, man. Definitely deserves it. And uh, like I was telling everybody before, that's my inspiration, bro. I see, he, he, he did. I mean, I beat him in, in uh, UFC 217. Now after two, three fights, he could be up for the title next. I could be there this time next year for sure. Steven, over here. Uh, you just mentioned that after your knockout loss uh, to Anthony Pettis, questions you know, came up, creeped up, whether you were slowing down or not. Um, I'm wondering, with that being said, how much was riding on this fight as far as your future? Um, I would say a lot. I mean, after a, a third loss, wouldn't be pretty good, especially in the UFC's eyes. You know, I've seen guys get booted out with less than that. So all this stuff is going through your head. But for me, that's just like, man, it's... That shouldn't be in my head. I, I, you know, that negative stuff shouldn't be there. So every time I would, that would pop in my head, I would fill it with something positive. You know, I'm going to go out there and win this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end this fight with my hand raised. Um, so that's what I tried to do going into this fight. Actually walking out, there's so much stuff that pops in your head. You're going to die. 
You know, when you walk out, that's literally what you're thinking. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm wishing like an asteroid comes down and blows the place up so I don't have to fight. You know, all this stuff is going through your head. It's like, it's crazy. And it, I've got close to almost 80 fights. And every time I step out there, it's the same. But <clears throat> I think when that goes away, maybe I need to hang it up. You know what I'm saying? So you, those nerves definitely help you when you're out there. But I try and fill those negative thoughts with something positive for sure. Was there a chance that we could have seen the last of you tonight if, if things didn't go right? Did, did you ever think of that or no? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm 37. You got guys fighting until the 41, you know? Um, DC, I thought he looked, his last fight, the one he lost better than his other last three fights. He looked amazing. He just got caught. I've been there before. So I keep my body healthy. Um, I train on a daily basis. Uh, we don't beat each other up in the gym. You know, um, so we train smart. <clears throat> My dad has been training guys since the 70s and 80s, so we listen to him, and he knows how to train fighters, and that's how we do it. I, we, at Media Day, we spoke how, you know, you've been training smarter, and also you've been giving your body a, a break, especially in between fights, just to, you know, uh, expand your career and, and, and be as healthy as, as possible. I know we don't know the status of the hand, but ideally, how much time would you like to take off? Man, um... Not too long if, if, if this is okay, you know, three months down the road. Hopefully that's all it takes. Hopefully I don't need any surgery, <clears throat> but I would love to get back out there as soon as possible. And lastly for me, uh, next pay-per-view, the welterweight title will be contested. Um, mm -hmm. Who do you have in that matchup, Usman or Covington? That's a good fight. Both very similar fighters, both high-level wrestlers. And, um, you know, you got the guy who's, I think Usman's a great champion. He's got a good hand on his shoulder, good family man. And then you got the guy that everybody loves to hate, which is Covington. But that said, both amazing fighters, and I think it's going to come down to who's got the best striking. I think they're both good enough to keep the fight standing, so they're both going to be forced to strike it out, which I don't mind that at all. I think that's going to be awesome. But I'm, going, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards my man Usman for sure. So quick question right in front. Uh, <clears throat> there seemed to be a couple times in the second when you had Luke pretty hurt. He was down. You are trying to rain down ground and pound and it seemed like you backed off. Was the hand a part of that, or was it just you realized you didn't have the spot that you needed and were trying for something else? I think it was the fact that I didn't have, really have the spot. And uh, when I remember when I knocked him down, it was kind of weird because he just sat down. It's not like he fell. He just kind of backed up and sat down and rolled to his back. So I was kind of like, is this guy setting me up for something? What is he doing? You know, so that was kind of going kind of, you know, out there a little bit, kind of going through my head. So. Um, I just tried to pick my shots, and when I didn't, when I didn't land, I didn't want to get into a grappling match. I see that done a lot, where guys rush in, and then the, your opponent that you just hurt grabs a hold of you, and they recover. So I didn't want that to happen. So I tried to get the fight standing as soon as possible. And there's also uh, his back was to the cage. You were firing away, didn't get the shot you were looking for, and again, also backed off. Again, kind of the same thing. Um, he's been coming forward pretty much the whole fight. Once he started backing up, I figured he was trying to lead me down a rabbit hole. And then I do that a lot to a lot of guys as well. I'll back up, back up, get them to come in, and then I'll plant, boom, and fire, and they run into it. So I figured that's what, was, what he was thinking. So I kind of slowly moved in, you know, tried to pick my shots and back out because I wasn't really sure he was looking for the counter. Uh, Wonderboy, just wondering, I mean, you've been in the division for a while now. Would you say this is the most skilled and the toughest it's been? I mean, Vicente was one of your hardest challenges, and this is not a guy that's even ranked too highly yet. Would you say it's the most skilled at the moment that you've seen it? Um, in a while, yes. I think, I mean, everybody I fight in, in the UFC is, is high-level skilled. But when it came to, you know, down to adapting to somebody, I think Rory McDonald was that guy that I really had to adapt to and figure out. Because those guys like that, they make changes after every time they fight. You know, guys like Johnny Hendricks, no offense, but you've seen him fight once, you've seen him fight 100 times. But um, Roy McDonald and Vicente Luque, they make changes. So those are the guys you kind of have to worry about when you're out there. So I had to be very cautious. He was very high level, high, high level and uh, in his striking, Dutch kickboxing, had some good leg kicks. But then again, I mean, he kind of threw the same thing over and over again. You know, he tried to hit him with the right hand, and then he, he hit him with a few left hooks, and he would go to the leg. He occasionally threw a spin back kick, but uh, it, I, can, I felt that it wasn't natural for him. But definitely the toughest guy, like tough as in he took some shots and kept on coming. So um, that right there, I mean, just, you know, I've seen guys 
break mentally after fighting guys like that, you know? Um, it, it was good. It was a good scrap for sure. Just last one from me. Just wondering, did you get a chance to see Darren Till's uh, performance against? Not a whole lot of it. I had not a whole lot of it. Um, I was actually doing media and stuff when that fight was going. I was trying to peek out the corner of my eye, but they were like, "Focus!" So uh, I had to stay focused on what they were asking me, so I get the answers right. But uh, I heard he won. Um, I heard the fight was very close. Uh, I, I heard from some people that Kevin won it. I heard from some people that Till won it. So it was kind of back and forth from what I was hearing. Steven over here, congratulations on the win. Thank you. Damian Maya just had a big win over Ben Askren, and he announced that he's going to fight two more times before he calls it a career. And if I ask somebody who, who would they like to match make against Damian Maya for one of those last two fights, your name comes up an awful lot. Would you want to be one of those guys that would he's fight Damian Maya? He's a tough and scary guy, man. I don't care what you say. The guy's 41, but he, could, he would kill you in a heartbeat on the ground, grab you by your wrist and just drag you down there and choke you out. And uh, very scary guy. I would have to take some time to really prepare for him. But, hey, I would love to scrap. Um, anybody in the division, man, especially the top 15, I would love to step out there with him. But my mind is set forward right now, going up. I would love to fight, the, you know, Masvidal again or Nate. But we'll see. Yeah, it could definitely happen in the future for sure.